Maybe I owe Durham a thank you. And not for revealing things that I already knew, you already knew. Maybe I owe Durham a thank you for basically laying out the sky is green theory for us. I'm not going to go over the sky is green theory. Longtime viewers will know it. The basics of it is the system is so weaponized now. All the cultural institutions work together that they can make a significant portion of the United States of America believe something that is an outright lie. They can make a huge percentage of this population look up at the sky and declare it to be green. How many friends, family members do you have, co-workers, who believe Donald Trump colluded with Russia? How many? Let's be honest with ourselves here. It's a lot. We all know somebody. Depends on how many Democrats you have in your life. Look, let's just get right down to it. If you have any Democrats in your life, they believe Donald Trump colluded with Russia. Why do they believe that, though? Now, we know from the Durham report that not only did the FBI bury all the dirt on Hillary Clinton, bury the investigations on Hillary Clinton, they also took campaign opposition research on Trump, not verified because it was all a lie. Clinton campaign hands it to the FBI. FBI runs with it. Doesn't verify a thing. Even once they knew it was a lie, they kept pursuing it. And let's just be clear about something here before we go into why your Democrat friends believe that. Today, the doors of the FBI should be closed. A scandal of this magnitude, finding out the federal law enforcement arm got knee-deep involved in a presidential election to protect Democrats and attack the Republican means the doors of the Hoover building should be locked, chained shut today, every FBI employee fired and or put on leave. We will begin public trials within six months as we begin to gather paper. It's that big of a deal. This is nation-ending stuff. But why do your friends, why do your Democrat friends believe the sky is green, that Donald Trump colluded with Russia? Well, Hillary was telling them that he, that he did. We have never in the history of our country been in a situation where an adversary, a foreign power, is working so hard to influence the outcome of the election. And believe me, they're not doing it to get me elected. They're doing it to try to influence the election for Donald Trump. Now, maybe because he has praised Putin, maybe because he says he agrees with a lot of what Putin wants to do, maybe because he wants to do business in Moscow. I don't know the reasons, but we deserve answers. You heard the presidential nominee say it. Oh, but it wasn't just Hillary Clinton. That, that would be just one of the little cultural pillars. That wouldn't be a big deal if it was just Hillary Clinton. Your Democrat friend, your liberal Aunt Peggy, over and over and over again, she sat down at night, turned on the news, she watched the things like this. The U.S. president possibly working for the Russians, possibly an unwitting pawn. Now here's what the president said when asked if he was a secret Russian agent. Donald Trump knows the noose is tightening. The noose is tightening. The, the, the noose is tightening, if you will. The noose is tightening around the president. The noose is tightening. And I think they're shocked that the noose is tightening the, and that people might go to jail. He knows he and POTUS are going to prison. Well, I think they're all going to end up together in prison, and maybe that's a good thing. Oh, my thing. God. Your liberal Aunt Peggy believes the sky is green. But the sky is not green. What color is the sky? Well, the CIA, they were involved in this too. They had direct knowledge that this entire plan was bogus. Then President Barack Obama, then CIA Director John Brennan, then FBI Director James Comey, AG Loretta Lynch. They not only all knew that this was a false Hillary Clinton campaign op, they knew it was a false Hillary Clinton campaign op, and they still pushed the FBI to pursue it anyway. That's how broken and rotted and corrupt your government is. The FBI knew in September of 2016 that all this was a lie, and yet James Comey is still out there in writing pushing for FISA warrants based on phony information. The scale of this, there's, there's no amount of doomsday rhetoric I could use right now that could properly convey to you how gigantic this is.
In fact, they took one of the main guys involved in this, Igor Dechenko. Don't worry about his name, but that's his name, Igor Dechenko. Sounds like a bad guy in a James Bond movie. Just paying him fortune to continue to lie to them. Hey, Igor, we need the lies to keep coming. Keep bringing the lies in. Now, what does this mean to you? What does this mean for a country? Well, let me, let me be clear. We're not going to have a country in 100 years. Not one that looks like this at all. When you get to a point where your republic is in such a late stage, so carotid and and corrupt, that these kinds of things can not only happen, but no one will get in trouble. Remember, that's the most damning part of this. Not only will no one get in trouble, the FBI even put out a statement basically saying, oh, we did some reforms, and uh, now that we have those reforms, none of this like this will happen again. They needed reforms to stop themselves from lying to violate the rights of an American citizen and the Republican nominee for President of the United States of America. Once you get to a place like this, there's no getting the band back together again. You need government people going to prison in droves if you want a chance to save America. Not a, not probation, not a slap on the wrist, not resignations, not firings. People within the walls of the FBI, CIA, DOJ, the White House, they have to have handcuffs placed on them. They have to be put under public trials and they have to go to prison for a very long time. If that doesn't happen, and there's no indication that will happen at all, you don't have a country anymore. Very soon you will not. This will end the United States of America. It will. Even today, now that the system has to deal with the Durham report, they're out there trying to act as if all, all is well. What you have with John Durham is, like, it's a big, fat nothing. Durham's whole thing is predicated on, it, it's like a rabbit hole conspiracy. We knew from the very beginning exactly what John Durham was going to conclude, and that's what we saw today. We knew from the very beginning this was never a legitimate investigation. This was a political errand. It seems to be a complete dud. Once again, another dud by John Durham. Okay. So the system's going to run cover. Everyone in the FBI, DOJ, CIA is going to get off scot-free. We have Trump out there on, on True Social saying, Congress must do something about this. But the thing is, they can't. They won't. That's all there is to it. But we have to do something, or don't we? We have to do something to make sure you have some semblance of a normal life that, more importantly, your children do, their children after them. So... What are we going to do? Well, set aside your thoughts of the United States of America. That's the first thing you need to do. This country very likely cannot be saved. You won't recover from things like this. No, nations don't recover from things like this, not without accountability. And since there won't be any, we need to take some steps, some specific aggressive steps. You see, the only hope at preserving Western civilization, period, at this point in time, is found in red America, specifically the red states. You can't even go to Canada anymore. The red states are the last hope. The future of the United States of America will be a coalition of red states. So what does that mean? What should you start demanding, demanding from your state governments, governors, AGs, state police? Well, almost every state, 49 out of 50, I believe, they have a state police force. And state police forces do state police force things, drugs, kidnappings, murders, that kind of thing. But AGs and governors need to completely reorder, in red states, they need to reorder their state police force to be a force that has mission priority one of protecting the citizens of that state from the government. Your state police force should be reorganized to stand in between you and the federal government, which very clearly is way out of control and is coming for you. That's one. Two, the FBI has field offices all across the United States of America. States need to remove those field offices, remove the FBI from within your borders. The Stasi cannot be allowed to operate within the borders of a red state to continue violating the rights of American citizens. If they would like that to change, if they want to continue to operate there, call me when about, oh, I don't know, 500 to 1,000 people are sitting in federal prison who used to work at the FBI, and then we can discuss reopening the offices in our state. Your county sheriff, 
Whether you're in a red state or a blue state, Lord willing, you're in a red county. If not, you are definitely screwed, and you don't matter anyway unless you get out. But let's say you're in a red county. It's time to start digging in and getting your county sheriff, getting a county sheriff who promises not only to stand up for you to stop the FBI from violating your rights, it's time to start electing county sheriffs who promise to deputize the citizens of your community should the Stasi come knocking on doors. This may, this may sound a lot, may sound too much, it may sound over the top. If you believe it's too much, over the top, hyperbole, I would argue you need to read a history book. When you have a secret state police agency working on behalf of one political party, and dedicating itself to destroying the opponents of that political party, well, that kind of thing has killed more men than cancer. The future is darker than you can imagine unless people wake up and realize what I'm saying is true and start taking steps now to stop them. The future of this country is a coalition of red states banding together against a wildly out of control federal government. And that may make you uncomfortable, but I am right. You like what you just saw? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. The First TV has a YouTube channel. It's outstanding. Go hit that subscribe button now.